Good morning, everybody. My name is Professor Fukdo. I work for the University of Information Technologies, Vietnam National University at Ho Chi Minh City. Today, I go to Chapter 10 in the System Analysis and Design course. This chapter, I will present about the feasibility analysis and the system proposal. You know, when you start a project, you set up an information system, you must do the app as it means the feasible study. So I hope this chapter I will let you know about how to identify feasibility checkpoint in the system file cycle. I will identify alternative system solution. How to define and describe four types of feasibility in their respective criteria. How to perform various cost benefit analysis using time adjusted costs and benefit. How to write suitable system proposal report for different audiences to receive the acceptance from them. And how to plan a formal presentation to system owner and users. I hope with this lecture you will understand how to set up a feasible study. Now let me go to a definition of what is the feasible analysis. Feasible stability is the measure of how beneficial or practical an information system will be to an organization. I focus on the beneficial or practical. It means the the information system can be used efficiently in your organization. Because anyway, you invest a lot of money, you invest a lot of labor, you in invest a lot of time to set up an, an, in an information system. So you must know, you must measure how beneficial or practical an information will, will be to your organization. Feasible, uh, feasibility and analysis, it means the process by which feasibility is a measure. Creeping commitment is an approach to feasibility that proposes that feasibility should be measured throughout the life cycle. And I will analyze about the feasibility checkpoints, I mean about the system analysis, the scope definition. System analysis, I mean the problem analysis. And system design, the system analysis. Mm, I will discuss with you about the four paths for feasibility. The first one is uh, operational feasibility. I mean, measure of how well a solution will work or, or to be accepted in an organization. I mean, PICS, P I E C E S framework. You will, the managers and users support the system. And what are the resistance? to implementation. As you know, when you implement an IS, maybe you change the role of the people. Maybe some people is a very job, they have a no job, they move to the new job and they will receive the resistance from the environment. I mean the usability analysis really a test of the system user interface. About the technical feasibility is a solution practical. Do we propose the necessary technologies to be process technical expertise and I schedule feasibility a measure of how reasonable the project time is. Economics feasibility it means a measure of the cost effectiveness of a project of solution. Cost benefit analysis techniques cost develop the cost are one type cost that will not recur after the project has been completed. Operating costs are costs that tend to recur throughout the lifetime of the system. Such costs can be classified as fixed costs, it may occur at regular intervals, but at relative fixed rate. And vary a cost, it may occur in proportion to same usage active. And benefits, it means 
tangible benefits that mean the benefit you can see you can touch and you can assume that can be easily quantified but you see beside of tangible tangible benefit you also have intangible benefits assume benefits believe to be difficult or impossible to quantify now you see here is a cost of proposal system. You see an example here. You see the development cost. <clears throat> it means the personal, personal expensive for the hardware and projected annual operating cost. You have the development cost and operating cost. It means the cost to you must have in order to maintain the operation of your system. Now let me go to three popular techniques to assess economic feasibility. The first one you use the payback analysis, return on investment, and net presence value. The, the time value of money, the time of value of money is a concept that should be analyzed to each apply to each. And you see the time value of money recognize that a dollar two days it worth more than a dollar one year from now. More than. You need to about the interest. Payback analysis. Payback analysis is a technique for determining if and when an investment will pay for itself. Payback period, the period of time that will lapse before accrual benefits overtake accrual and continue costs. And the present value formula. This is the formula of the present value. The present value, the current value of a dollar at any time in the future, and you see the formula here. The PVN is equal to 1 over 1 plus i power n, where n is the number of years and i is the discount rate. Discount rate is a percentage similar to the interest rate that you earn on your saving. In most cases, the discount rate, the discount rate is the discount rate is more case the discount rate for business is the opportunity cost of being able to invest money in other projects or investment. You see here is it we use Excel to analyze a payback analysis for a project. You see here about the gas flow description and you see here this uh, uh, seven years from year uh, year old to year one to year two and so forth. And you see here the development costs, uh, operation maintenance costs, the discount factor, and so forth. We have a manufacturer, and we have the payback analysis for each year. I discussed with you about the return on investment analysis, we call ROI. Return on investment analysis is a technique. That compares the lifetime profitability of alternative solution. The ROI for a solution or project is a percentage rate that measures the relationship between the amount of business gets back from an investment and the amount invested. As you know, when you set up an information system, you must invest money. So, what time you take it back? You must be on the, I mean, the economic factor, like return on investment to calculate the time you can balance between your investment and your usage. Lifetime ROI is estimated lifetime benefits minus estimated different lifetime costs divided by estimated lifetime costs. And you, you can calculate the annual ROI is equal lifetime ROI is over lifetime of the system. You see here is that using Excel to calculate the net present value analysis. Net present value in an analysis technique that compares the annual discounted cost and benefit of alternative solution. And you see here you made it in the column A you have a manufacturer, I mean the gas flow decryption. You have a development cost, operation maintenance cost, and so forth. And you have a seven year from year zero to year number six in the total. And you can analyze by using the Excel to calculate the next present value and analyze this.
And here is a feasible feasibility analysis matrix. You see a matrix is you see the column and the rows. And feasibility analysis matrix is a tool you to run the candidate system. Candidate one, candidate two, and candidate three names and the description. And because you see you have a many candidate system for your organization, so you make a comparison for them. And in the column, you see the description. You have the operational feasibility, about the technical feasibility, about the schedule. You have a limit of time. Economic feasibility. You have the economic. You have um, economic limit limited investment and the ranking A B C D is based on the reputation of uh, your company who want to set up the information system for your organization. So the feasible analysis metric can help you to compare between or among the candidates. Uh, this is a, a sample feasibility analysis matrix. You see here operation feasibility and you have a three candidates. And you can see operational feasibility why encryption of up to what degree the candidate would benefit the organization and how well the system would work. And the candidate one is only support the member service requirement. And current business process uh, would have to be modified to take advantage of software functionality. About the candidate two, fully support user required functionality. And about candidate three is same as candidate two. And you have score. You can uh, you can mark the engagement yeah, score. Candidate one is a score sixty only. The candidate two and candidate three is a score one hundred, so a little bit higher than candidate one. And so forth. You have a uh, many uh, aspect like technical feasibility and about the economic feasibility and schedule feasibility and the time. For example, you see the feasible the schedule feasibility for the candidate one is only less than three months. But for the candidate two, maybe uh, nine or twelve months. Mm, candidate mm, three is uh, nine or twelve months. So anyway, it means the candidate one because less than three months, so the score is a little bit high. Now it now is a score uh, ninety five. But candidate two is only eighty, and then so forth. You see, the candidate three is eighty five. So when you analyze uh, many aspect, I mean the operational feasibility, technical feasibility, etc. You can make a sum, and so the total ranking is total ranking. I mean the sum. The, the candidate one is a sixty point uh, five. The candidate two is a ninety two, and the candidate three is a eighty five. So the good, the best one is the candidate two. Now I go to the system proposal. A system proposal is a report or presentation of a solution. Remember the formal writing report or, or oral presentation. So this is the reason why we must train the skill of writing the report or oral presentation is very important. We intend it for system owner and user. I mean primary elements present the actual information that the report is intended to convey. And secondary elements is packing to report so the reader can easily identify the report and its primary elements. The format is the factual format is traditional and best suited to readers who are interested in facts and details as well as conclusion. And the administrative format as is a model result oriented format preferred by manager and executive. And this is a format of, of written reports. Uh, you, you have a format, I mean the factual format and the administrative format. And you see a skeleton here. The first one is introduction. The second one is the method and procedures. Then facts and details. Discussion and analysis of facts and details. Recommendation and conclusion. And for the administrative format, you see the, the first one is introduction, conclusion and recommendation. A summary and discussion of facts and details, the method and procedure, the final conclusion, and the appendix with facts and details. About the secondary element for a written report, I mean the first one is a letter of transcriptal, title page, table of contents, list of figure, illustration, and table. 
abstracts or SQT summary. The primary elements, the body of the report, in either the factual or administrative format, are presented in this portion of the report and appendices. There's typical outline and time allocation for an oral presentation. And as I told you, the oral presentation will very important because you have the time to present your report and you can communicate. I mean, to answer the question from your partner, from the company who want to have any question about your proposal. The first one is introduction on sake of total time available, then problem statement, then work completed today. Day is very important, day in the time. You must fulfill your system. The second is the part of the presentation, two thirds of total time available, summary of existing problem and limitation, summary description of the proposed system, feasibility analysis, proposed schedule to complete project. The question and concern from the audience, time here is not to be included in the time allotted for presentation and conclusion. It is determined by Zoe asking the question and voicing their concerns. And then the conclusion, one sheet of total time available, available, summary of proposal, call to action required for whatever authority you acquire to continue system development. <coughs> You need a guideline for visual app. You see here a lot of picture here. Not too much because it, 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 it means you see the clumsy. Very difficult to identify the main idea. Not too late. You was on time. Not too many. Not too few. Not too small. Not too soon. Not too late. Not too fast. And not too slow. You, I think, this guideline for visual app. Thank you for your joining us. I hope this lecture will help you to understand clearly about the feasible analysis. Thank you.